They have yeah. people working on acoustics yeah. or bio-opening yeah. sessions. And then yeah. oh, we also have yeah. people from all the biomechanics of yeah. 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 And then also people like myself is more of a nano device, yeah. but wearable yeah. devices, yeah. flexible yeah. software yeah. devices, yeah. also yeah. Yeah. for yeah. some bio, yeah. biomedical yeah. applications. Yeah. Biomedical yeah. engineering also. Yeah. 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 So you see, that's, that's the intention. We're also trying to put people together. <laughs> Similar to what you guys are doing. <laughs> So the conference, the mm -hmm. Do you know how many abstracts you have received? How many yeah, people you have received? Right now, as a regular paper, we have uh, around uh, 170 or 80. Okay. And there was uh, a presentation on the abstract. Still deadline. Right, right, right. So, yeah. You probably see our search, right? Before the deadline. Right now, you know, about 80. So okay. hopefully one dollar in a couple yeah. of days. Yeah, no, I yeah. Like, yeah, probably one dollar. So all of our what the uh, you know invited session we have uh, twenty four but some sessions and uh, okay. uh, yeah. any speakers. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we do have uh, one hundred fifty invited uh, speakers okay. all together. Very so I think we will we'll, we'll have uh, minimally yeah. four hundred and uh, each more than five hundred. That will depend on. Good morning, everyone. Um, today, uh, we're really uh, honored to have Professor Jim Wu Kim um, to, to visit us, giving us a seminar. Uh, Professor Jim Wu Kim is the director of a bio nano technology group and a professor of uh, biological engineering, biomedical engineering and the Material Science and Engineering at the University of Arkansas. He's a Jack Professor of Electric Engineering at uh, Paul Han University of Science and Technology, it's post-tech um, in Korea. He received his BS, first BS in Chemical Technology from Seoul Na National University, and his second BS in Microbiology from University of Iowa, and he received his MS in Biology from University of Wisconsin. And you know, he's a PhD in the bi biological engineering from Texas A&M University. And he was uh, also a visiting professor of the School of Engineering and Applied Science at Harvard University and the Center for Functional Nanomaterials at Brookhaven National Lab. His research focuses more in the bio nanotechnology, uh, biologically inspired nanotechnology, which spans truly an interdisciplinary field of biological engineering, biomedical engineering, biology, chemistry, and nanotechnology. Uh, Professor Kim has published over 150 articles, uh, over 250 presentations, in, with over 90 imaginary presentations, five patents, and received several teaching and uh, uh, research awards. It holds editorial board memberships for several journals, including the editor-in-chief of IEEE Open Journal of Nanotechnology and the senior editors of IEEE Transactions on nanotechnology and actually transactions of nano bioscience. And he hold, also uh, hold leadership positions uh, in for international societies, uh, including the president elect um, 2023, that is of ITB Nanotechnology Council. I mean, uh, 2024, 2025, we'll have President King uh, for ITB <laughs> And also, uh, he uh, currently serves as a vice president for, for well, now he's elect, right? He served vice president for conference in 2021, 2022. And he also served as a vice president for publication at the IEEE NTC in 2017 to 2019. Uh, Professor Kim also uh, 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 hosts several other uh, leadership um, positions in the international conference, including right now is the general chair for IEEE Nano 2023. He also chaired a, 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 a number of probably more than 10 uh, international conferences over the last several years. Um, Professor Kim is a fellow of IEEE, is a fellow of American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering, AIMBE, we know that, and also uh, IEEE, uh, you served as IEEE Nano Discussion Lecturer in 2017 and 2018. With that, let's welcome Professor Kim. Thank you, Dr. Jian, um, for kind introduction. And the long you know, introduction, that does not mean you know, 
different. Good, right? Usually long means uh, there's something there. But anyway, hello everyone. I'm Jinu Kim again. And uh, um, I really appreciate uh, that Professor Jiang inviting me here. And uh, um, my background is more geared towards the biology plus engineering. So I know this department is uh, you know, more mechanical, but nowadays uh, combining bio to the um, program. So some of the items uh, I may discuss today, um, you know, more towards the biology. So I'm going to let, uh, um, you know, shorten that. But certainly for such materials, you could, uh, um, you know, if interested, then read my paper or what the contact me and we can what really discuss. So with that, um, Okay, this uh, kind of busy slide, uh, um, you know, the, 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 um, summarize what I'm doing, the core of things, uh, what I try to do. So in my group, um, what I try to do is what the lessons I learned from biology. I have some, you know, biology background there and, uh, not extensive, uh, um, you know, the, 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 um, contents or theory in biology, but what the, some key items from biology, I try to find a better way to um, devise and uh, design and uh, assemble um, nanoscale materials uh, together, um, biological and the non-biological materials, and uh, control their size, shape, composition, so that at the end, uh, how we can better control the function properties of it. That's what the, the core part of it. And for that, um, I started to realize in order to do this, uh, the different types of materials merge together. So how we can want to control the interface between the particles, those are important. So um, interface the control, that's uh, um, one key part. And then what the, the assembly, how we can what effectively do it. So biological um, component like uh, DNA or peptide, peptide is what the, the fundamental unit of protein using that. And then what we could do self-assembly process that happens, uh, you know, always or already inside our biological system. So that's what the way. But a programmable self-assembly that is one I'm doing the core part. But also I'm using what the different chemical based, uh, um, you know, the the the, the interaction too. So with that. Um, it's kind of a redundant, but application-wise, uh, mainly I try to apply to you know biomedical or biological field, so uh, medical diagnostics uh, and uh, you know the therapeutics and also tissue engineering, drug delivery. How we apply such material um, and uh, develop um, you know better fit for the, such application. And also, what uh, um, you know, I I don't have extensive background in mechanical or electrical side, but uh, I work with uh, members of faculty in those department and apply um, my concept, my material developed um, for such application too. And also, what uh, um, you know, as you could see, I'm in biological engineering. Traditionally, biological engineering department is called NC State, the same, right? Biological and agricultural engineering. So um, I chose to stay, remain in the department, not moving to biomedical. There was what, uh, you know, the, 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 the um, chance there. Um, but uh, anyway, because of nature of the department, I, um, you know, extend my research towards uh, um, bio-resource-based, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the um, field too. So one of the key things uh, I'm doing as uh, Nano components. I talked about nano components, a variety of different things. So, in organic nanoparticles and also biological. So, for that, I'm using um, cellulose nanocrystal. And uh, what we do is uh, extracting those from biological resources like woody, um, you know, biomass. North Carolina has a lot of uh, trees too, right? Arkansas has a lot of trees. So um, with that and uh, applying my core concept and uh, try to develop better materials for specific application. Um, for my today, uh, today um, you know, the, 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 the talk, I'm gonna uh, um, focus on two main things um, out of uh, um, several things I'm doing in my group. One is what, uh, um, you know, how we can better do um, in vivo real-time 
there are therapeutics and diagnostics using nano components or um, nano composite material. And then what, uh, based upon lessons I learned from that application, and we um, try to develop strategies and uh, a methodology to better develop materials um, for such application. So that's what the uh, um, one. At the end, I may briefly talk about you know the the, the cellulose nanocrystal and other things if time allowed. But those are what the, the two king, key things I'm gonna do. And nowadays, the, the term nanotheranostics become you know the the, the common. Right, but what, uh, in 10 years ago, it was what a really new term. And uh, I happened to be one of the groups that started using that term. So nanotheranostics is uh, basically using nanotechnology-based uh, material or methodology um, to do both uh, therapeutics and uh, um, you know, diagnosis. Okay. So usually nanoparticle or nanoscale composite materials decorated with the uh, so-called biomarker, which um, will recognize, target the um, location you want what the particle particle system to be. So with that, inject that to the um, you know, animal or human, and then what, uh, um, based upon their response to particular, um, you know, the wavelength or particular um, you know, input, and uh, um, you know, sensing and uh, um, diagnose uh, that disease, and also um, using different uh, way of response and uh, doing um, therapeutics together. So that's uh, um, nanotheranostics. And uh, uh, for that, we had uh, quite a bit of work. In vitro, we, used, uh, we started using carbon nanotube and uh, their um, unique property, um, applying their unique property for um, you know, diagnostics and uh, um, you know, therapeutics. And also, at, uh, um, you know, with the in vitro study, um, we identify core um, the, the, the the needed field in the field in medicine, and then what we try to focus on, you know, the um, in vivo real time nanotheranostics, and we try to develop materials and also what the, um, methodology to implement that. Okay, so with that. Um, Today I'm going to want to focus on the um, you know this uh, in vivo um, the 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 diagnostics and uh, um, I will briefly talk about uh, um, my kind of uh, kind of like uh, early stage you can say ten years ago so uh, early stage work but how that um, started and how those work uh, um, influence my um, you know work uh, in development of strategies to um, assemble and the design, design and assemble on um, better materials for such application, okay? So um, that's, uh, you know, the one I'm gonna talk about, okay? So basically in vivo real-time nanotheranostics is what, uh, um, you know, the, not the taking samples out of uh, the system, like uh, um, you know, animal system or what the human, okay? And uh, um, in vivo itself, how we can do the, um, uh, therapeutics and the diagnosis there. So in here, basic concept is what the using the particle particle system as contrast agent, and then what uh, some sort of energy input there. We are using what uh, certain wavelength of laser and uh, their responsiveness. Based upon that, we detect or or um, as you call the the the, the um, diagnose uh, um, the disease or what the certain you know things happen in the system. And also, what uh, um, in this case, if you increase uh, input energy, then um, the particle responds uh, strongly. So you usually what the laser based the strongly response then heat generated. So enough heat generates, so you could actually um, kill or what uh, um, you know, the, 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 the remove the um, the bad cells around there. So that's the basic concept. And uh, with that, and First, you wonder why you know I care about in vivo real time nanotheranostics there, right? So, um, main motivation was based up, upon the challenges we have um, for um, you know, metastasis. Okay, so um, cancer case, as yeah, you you know, metastasis 
is what the cause of uh, over 90% uh, cancer related death. And uh, um, also, what the, a lot of diseases are transmitted by um, pathological features through the blood circulating, um, you know, in the blood uh, um, system. There, so um, it is what uh, um, important detect such circulating bad cells and abnormal cells, right? But what the, it is quite challenging. So um, I think the next slide will um, tell, right? So. In blood cell, uh, blood, a lot of uh, different type of things, right? Proteins and also white blood cells, the red blood cells, and a variety of different background material there. Within, within such, um, you know, the, 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 in such background, it is hard to detect a few cells, a few particular cells there, right? So um, that's a big challenge. And also what, uh, um, you know, the, the other thing is uh, um, circulating cell detection, that's tough. But what uh, um, studies uh, are more so now, it is what uh, more and more confirmed. But um, among the circulating tumor cell, a few number of cells, so-called the circulating stem cells, those are what the really the bad cells uh, um, you know, causing metastasis. So even the number of uh, target cell is what uh, um, smaller, right? So how we can detect that? And uh, um, the challenge coming from total volume of uh, blood, in general, what in you know, other around the five liter. You think about the, a few cells, meaning less than 10 cells in five liter. What is chance you draw blood sample 20, 50 milliliter and the, the, you know, the bad cell, target cells in that sample? Very, very long, right? So ex vivo met method is excellent, and the sensitivity is very high. It's getting better, better, better. But the problem is not that um, you know, the, 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 um, this detection method. The problem is uh, the, you know, the, the, the um, low number of uh, cells in huge amount of uh, volume of uh, blood. Okay. So how we can detect those? So that's a real challenge. So we conclude that the uh, um, you know, best way would be just to try to find a way to um, detect in vivo. So that was what the, the start of the study. And uh, also what the, there are what uh, several other reasons there. So heterogeneous uh, genius, uh, um, you know, the, the population of circulating tumor cells, they make it even harder, right? So um, among different types, you want to select and to find the one type, it's even hard. And also at the, in biology, we don't know all about uh, um, you know, the, the, the um, metastasis-related uh, um, biology. So um, lack of uh, um, information from, from biology, that's another challenge, but that's uh, um, you know, biology, biology side should do, right? So that signify that uh, um, you know, the importance of working together, engineering side and the biology. It was really hard um, you know, the before and still, but it's getting better, right? So communicate each other and what is what uh, the one we need, then what they could uh, um, you know, focus and try to find the answer in biology. But there are a lot of things needs to do. And also what, uh, um, you know, the, if we can do um, capture such rare circulating tumor cells, particularly circulating stem um, cells, if we can do, then what they, if we can isolate, then we could actually contribute to the biology with that, um, you know, isolating it so that biologists start uh, um, you know, working on it, right? So with that, we, we thought, uh, um, you know, real-time in vivo um, approach is the best. So um, this is what the, the um, prerequisite we thought um, to realize in order for us to make such in vivo, um, you know, real time method work is what, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, um, it's so obvious based upon that, right? So just uh, explaining what in vivo real time means. So continuously monitoring and uh, um, based upon the, um, you know, monitor, monitoring the, what, the, the system and then what uh, 
find a way to um, concentrate and capture and uh, with the one specific um, you know method and to try to um, detect um, the cells captured and also what, how we can isolate those. So that's what the, the um, you know things that needs to be done and uh, um, there has been you know the, even in 10 years uh, um, you know a lot of uh, attempts. Um, for this uh, re metastasis related problems so there are what, uh, a lot of uh, many, a lot of challenges there and still there is no um, you know real practical method to do this hopefully what the, the approach we try um, you know become one of them so this work is what uh, in co collaboration with the dr. Vladimir Jarov at the medical school in Arkansas and I'm the one you know developing the materials so contrast agent and in vitro test, and then what in vivo study is done with the Dr. Zhao. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat this, but what the, that's uh, um, you know, the 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 the, um, the basic concept. And uh, in here, what we use is uh, oral thermal and the oral acoustic responsiveness of a particle um, to the particular wavelength, the the laser. Right, so that is what the related to that, uh, Professor Jiang does. But um, anyway, so that's uh, um, the way. And uh, with that, and again, there the the, the um, you know initial work uh, I'm going to uh, um, briefly discuss here. So I'm going to use these two as as an example, but particularly the second one. And uh, um, for this work, we developed uh, um, you know the the um, hybrid material. Um, with the carbon nanotube and coating that with the gold, which will, uh, which more strongly respond to the um, you know, wavelength. Particularly, we are interested in near infrared the range of uh, um, you know the energy in the laser there, because uh, biological tissue is what uh, um, rel rel relatively transparent um, to near infrared light. So, which means. Near infrared light, light um, within certain you know range of fluency. If you have a high near infrared light, then tissue is transparent, but still um, you know it will damage cells. But anyway, within their tissues does not uh, um, you know absorb. It. That means uh, no response. So you can do um, you know, non-invasive or what the minimally invasive uh, um, you know, way of uh, um, detection as well as uh, therapeutics you can do. So with that material, and second part we did was uh, okay, circulating tumor cells and rare um, you know number of cells we captured in vivo five liter. Right? So for that, uh, we thought uh, um, if we can you know find a way to concentrate or or um, you know separate those in one particular part of the body, then even if that's a few cells, but what do we um, concentrate it, then um, we could find a way to detect. So um, what we did that time is uh, dual targeting the um, cancer circulating um, cells with uh, um, this strong contrast agent, um, gold gold coated nanotube, and also magnetic particle together. Right. So gold nanotube was for um, you know detection as well as increasing um, laser fluency, fluency than what you could uh, kill the cells, and also magnetic particle was uh, to capture and concentrate the cells. Uh, you know, in one location. So, do our, um, you know, targeting and we try to um, do the in vivo, um, you know, real-time diagnostics for circulating tumor cells. This cartoon tells how we did. So, you know, dual targeting, as I briefly mentioned there. So, one is what the, this, uh, um, yeah, it's okay. Well, but anyway, so that, um, you know, goes the nanotube and magnetic particle. And also what, the, um, you know, we um, use uh, around the 900 nanometer um, you know, wavelength of laser, and uh, um, their response based upon their responsiveness, particularly what the you know, acoustic response, and we um, kept the the the, the um, detect and sensing the concentrated cells. So that's uh, um, the way we have done. Okay, and uh, this shows. Uh, um, the um, D 
detection setup and as such. So um, magnets and also at the transducer to um, detect from the <coughs> acoustic signal there. And uh, also at uh, you know, golden nanotube and magnetic particle, they do have a distinct uh, um, peak wavelength. And also at, uh, uh, one additional thing is uh, um, dual targeting added advantage was, uh, um, you know, what is that? The magnetic particle has some responsiveness at 900 nanometers. So it can, you know, the, the, the increase um, the, um, the, the, the response at uh, um, 900 nanometer. So, and uh, this is what uh, type of annual model we use, what, uh, um, you know, find the blood vessel in ear and abdominal part, and then what uh, we use that um, as uh, location um, to concentrate and to detect uh, um, yeah, the, the, the um, cells. So here, um, the key result here is what, uh, um, you know, as you can see, yeah. this is, I may not, uh, there you go. So these are the two, two key, um, you know, results there. So there are the many other things how we did uh, in this paper, you could uh, go through and read it. So as you can see here, um, you know, the injector and magnets on, then what, uh, as time goes by, the um, signal increases, which means uh, um, concentration, capturing concentration happen on that location there, right? So, um, and the, the other, um, you know, the, 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 uh, this um, bar graph shows um, at the beginning without magnet put on, and now for what a very low signal there, but what the magnet on, then what we start having on the, the um, Substantial increase in signal. What that, what that tells is that actually dual targeting. We can actually um, you know concentrate, and we can what uh, um, detect the cells in you know large volume of uh, um, blood, right? So the same number of uh, um, you know the cells circulating, but what the, without without my magnet on or what the, after releasing magnets, the response was what the, you know, low. And you cannot uh, detect it properly, but uh, putting the magnet concentrate, you can do that. Right? So mm -hmm. that's uh, um, you know that helps uh, um, our concept is working. Right. So um, with this work, um, you know we did additional you know the, the studies, um, more um, you know the realistic ones. That one we you know use uh, the the, the um, genetic tumor. Or we just uh, um, you know, initiated to mouse and uh, we um, tried to study there. But what the next the follow-up study we use what the more um, you know, realistic one, and including you know, the, the circulating stem cell, how we can what, detect those, and uh, um, additional work has been done. Mm -hmm. But um, there are additional you know, papers there if you're interested in go and read it, but um, I'm not gonna cover all details if that's too much violence there, right? But, one thing is, out of uh, our study, we um, you know found uh, um, challenges to overcome in order for us to realize uh, this uh, concept, right? So there are what uh, um, three different components there, but one is what uh, the material, the contrast agent. How we can what the better develop um, the contrast agent, which strongly respond to the um, you know source of energy we are using for detection or what the treatment. And also at the biology side, we need what the better, um, you know, and specific biomarkers, right? So that's uh, biology side should do. And also at the, what types of uh, um, you know, imaging or thera therapeutic modality we are gonna use, right? So that will, you know, dictate what types of contrast agent we have to develop, but uh, that's uh, the other part. But uh, the better you know, imaging modality or therapeutic modality, that's uh, you know, device people needs to do. But out of that, um, we started the focus on um, you know, one we can control, right? So that's the first part, develop better on contrast agents. So that's what we started. And the counter agent, what needs to be done, right? So a lot of, uh, um, you know, very busy here. I don't want you to read this, but what uh, um, we found uh, what are the challenges, what are those, right? So those are what are the things that we studied. And uh, based upon that, what I concluded was uh, um, counter agent for the, um, you know, 
application, we try to make it um, size, shape, composition, and uh, their surface uh, chemistry. Okay. So um, if you look at the material or composite material, then uh, it starts to make sense. And also biological, um, you know, the material is the same. So protein is the same. So what kind of uh, size shape, based upon that, the function differs. Okay? And also size shape is determined by the um, you know, composition of that material. Protein case, how, what types of uh, um, you know, amino acid compose of uh, that protein. Based upon amino, amino acid, folding mechanism different. So folding mechanism differs so um, they can make a different uh, size shape the material. So with that, um, you know, their function is determined. So controlling those is the key. That's what um, we found. And uh, um, that was what the, the um, you know, initiation of my work to um, find a better way, better strategies to um, design and assemble um, you know, the, the, the um, particles with the control over size, shape, and uh, composition. Okay. So with that, um, I'm going to move to the second part, okay? So how did that? So um, again, size, shape, and composition control is very important, right? So, um, you know, there are a lot of different things uh, involved there, but, uh, um, you know, the, the, the material development, the assembly-wise, composition of the material determines what the, the um, overall chemistry on the surface, right? And also what uh, um, additional things like uh, biomarkers should be attached there, how they will influence that. And also what, even before that, how we can effectively link biomarkers on the surface of that material. So that is important, okay? So, um, you know, even our study in um, for the Nature Nanotech paper, we could not use specific way of binding antibody or what the biomarkers onto the surface of uh, um, magnetic particle or what the gold coil nanotube. So we use the kind of like uh, non-specific way. So meaning, um, you know, surface of gold, uh, um, you know, let them positively charged, and then what the protein is in general, biological material in general, negatively charged. So we use kind of you know, electrostatic interaction and the non-specific way of binding, right? So that's uh, nothing wrong with it. But uh, the, the um, you know the potential problem there is because uh, a non-specific way. So for example, um, this one is what the, the antibody, right? So you, antibody is one of the uh, um, common thing you use uh, um, this idea to capture um, target cells or target um, you know the the, the um, component there. And there, there are what the, the location of the antibody, which is active to capture the target, right? So that is what the, this FAB reason. So FAB is exposed, then it work as you, um, you know, the plant. But what not specific, then it can, you know, bind upside down, right? So then what the, that antibody bound there is not going to work. So um, you know, if we find a way, the FC lesion, so another end, always bind to that the particle, then what we can guarantee our antibody um, bound there, then all antibody will work with that. So specific way of doing it is important. So control over size, shape, and composition, and accordingly, um, you know, the surface chemistry control is important. So with that, um, you know, we um, start thinking what kind of a criteria to consider, right? So first is what, first, there are a lot of many different types of nanoparticles available there, right? So first, uh, I gotta know uh, what, you know, property each one has, what chemistry each one has, mm -hmm. that's important. And another thing is what uh, relate to that size, shape, and all those of each component is important. And also what uh, the, um, the other thing is what the what types of uh, properties they have. So depending upon the um, you know, detection method, what kind of uh, um, response you want. Depending upon that, we can want to use different type of uh, materials in different shapes and sizes. Right? So that's the material standpoint to device design and uh, make a particle there, right? Particle particle system. And then the other thing um, I started to realize is what. Uh, um, you know, you have a particle-particle system, 
in when you make it and you test it in the lab, it works perfectly. You strongly respond to the source of energy and all those things, beautiful, right? And then you, as soon as you inject to the um, you know mice or what the human, then it's totally different story. I mean, they don't work as I expected, right? So that's because, for example, blood, a lot of different things, right? Proteins, white blood cells, right? So um, they interact with pot. So the first thing is what uh, we introduce foreign material to the biological system. So foreign material, then we have uh, immune system there, right? So we don't want to the foreign material. So for example, um, you know, the macrophages uh, recognize them as foreign, then they engulf and they kick that out of the body system there. We don't want that to happen, right? That process we say opsonization. So we have to have to minimize opsonization. So in order to minimize opsonization, um, surface chemistry is important. Okay. And also what the old proteins and all those, um, you know, negatively charged but different charges, that hydrophilic, hydrophobic, a lot of things. So um, surface of um, chemistry, uh, the, 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 um, depending of, upon the surface chemistry of material, whichever type, protein come and the try to bind on the surface. And then protein what the cover the surface. And that we what they usually call protein corona, but um, that one protein binding then property changes, right? So how we can control those? So sometimes you know by protein binding, then what the, the responsiveness we see in vitro in the lab without such thing happen. Sometimes the uh, signals will stop, right? So that's positive way, right? If that happens, then protein binding is a good thing, right? But about the, um, many cases it's not. But that gotta be tested in vitro before applying. So we should know what happens, what would happen in the system you apply. That is important um, during the next stage. So there, this is what the, just the, um, the example of what would happen in biological system. But if you apply to some other field, then you should find uh, what would happen there. What kind of uh, um, challenges and what, what kind of conditions the material or what the um, or you know the, 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 the certain material system will face that kind of concern. So um, those are the two different things, not only the material wise, but also what the um, the conditions and uh, um, things happen in in the location of uh, application. Those two um, needs to be considered. With that, and we try to find the uh, um, you know better way of doing it. So, um, so I'm going to want to start talking about, uh, um, you know, the way I thought would be um, um, one way to realize those. So, so called the uh, nano toolbox, but uh, the, we already talked about the, the importance of uh, control size to shape control. So that's rationale. So um, I believe uh, um, it's important. So um, the underlying hypothesis we had was uh, if we can, you know, Control and make if we can make uh, um, you know unit studying material, which can be well um, you know, defined um, surface chemistry and also what the, the um, active uh, um, linkers which can interact with each other, so that the, we can make uh, well defined structure at the end. So the, for that, the, the linkers on the um, you know the unit block should have uh, locational control and also what types of uh, um, you know, the linkers in each location and all those control needs to be done. And if we can have that, then what uh, I thought uh, we could do um, the assembly of uh, um, structure with a variety of different materials and define the size shape. Okay, so that was uh, um, the, the um, premise. And uh, uh, what this cartoon says is what uh, it's kind of a repetition, but what the, if we can have uh, um, you know, the, the, the um, active line, like this, what the um, you know, curved line, those uh, link, okay, connecting what the different particles together. So types of linker and uh, location of the linkers and number of linkers to a um, variety of different materials. And uh, uh, we have uh, um, toolbox, so with the such um, building blocks, then based upon the design you have to um, 
uh, for a particular application, then you can pick and choose and make it. Right? So that's the, um, the concept. Okay? Then what the, it is important to um, make uh, this type of uh, unit building block there. So with that, and then um, for this um, study, we use the um, DNA. Okay, DNA does have uh, um, unique property and advantage there. That's why we are using DNA. But what uh, um, you know, chemical linker can be used to. Actually, we are using chemical linker too. But DNA does have what the, the um, you know great potential for step assembly with uh, um, you know, the high efficiency as well as what the, um, you know, the, 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 the accuracy. That's why we are using DNA. So through the process, we attach DNA to the surface of a particle with uh, um, control over number location and uh, also what the, the types of those uh, um, you know, DNA sequences. So that's uh, um, the one we, we have done. And uh, in order to do it, um, we try to find a way, what would be what the uh, um, you know, best way to achieve this. Uh, with uh, such control number and the angle between you know the um, DNA linkers and also what the, the type, right? So that we say what the um, you know anisotropy, how we can achieve anisotropy of linkers. So we found was uh, um, you know so-called uh, monofunctionalization. That's uh, um, you know, the best way. So um, you know the, the in simply speaking, it's attaching the linker one by one. Right, so by doing so, you can have the control over the location number and their, um, you know, the angles each other, and also types of uh, the linker there. So um, there, this is what the, the um, you know schematic shows uh, how we did it. Okay, so the the way we did was uh, um, the top one. This is what the, the gray circle. Um, that is what the, the um, you know. Looks like uh, this is not big, but that's a micro size. B, um, the, 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 the um, particle, okay, like a silica gel type of uh, um, particle there. And on the surface, chemical groups there. Okay. So in this case, so the surface of this uh, um, you know, the particle has negatively charged. And uh, um, DNA case, we put the positively charged group on one end. The other end, we put another um, chemical group, which will interact with uh, um, you know, the nanoparticles. Okay. So for the case, the third binary group, SH group, is what the common one. And if uh, other type of interaction we intended, then we can use uh, different chemical groups there. But anyway, so uh, first uh, we bind the uh, um, DNA electrostatically on the surface of uh, um, you know, the, the, the solid uh, um, particle there. Okay. And then what we did was, after then, we introduced particles so that um, particle can attach to another end of uh, um, that, you know, the attached to DNA. And then uh, we cut this. Then we have one DNA. There, right? so, and then what they're using this as uh, um, you know, the material for next step, we bound this one to the surface, right? And uh, um, uh, to the, um, I'm sorry, this one goes to here and to find it. So you have uh, um, two DNA now, right? so you cut it, right? And now that you repeat this, you, you can what, attach um, three, four, five, six, right? And also what the, um, you know, DNA case for this one, DNA is negatively charged, so um, you know, always the electric repulsion happens. Right. They try to um, you know, away as much as they can. So that's why um, first the DNA, second DNA is 180 degree um, you know, distance there. And then what the next one, the um, you know, furthest uh, um, angle is 90 degree. As such, um, you know, they attach there. But this angle could be um, you know, modulated by um, controlling charge of this DNA. So one, one way would be um, you can attach um, you know, positive or negatively charged uh, um, you know, small linker to part of uh, um, DNA sequence. And you could uh, make a uh, um, you know, small angle or what the uh, um, larger angle, right? So that's uh, actually small angle, no larger angle. The larger angle is small too, right? So that's uh, if you want to make a uh, smaller angle between um, D 
DNA, then you could do it too. But at least what the, this is one way uh, we do. So by doing one by one, and when you do one by one, each step you use different type of DNA than what the all six DNA can be different, right? So you can truly um, you know, achieve an ice job. So um, that's the way. So um, you know, we proved that, okay? So um, this uh, um, image, the samples for this is attached one by one and six of them. And then what uh, um, we make uh, um, gold particle with uh, one DNA, um, complementary to the um, DNA attached to um, one particle. And then what uh, we did, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the um, sample prep and the TM image shows uh, um, you know, the two, then one DNA, then dimers, and the two DNA, then you know, the, 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 the trimer, and the three DNA, then what the, um, you know, it should make T-shape as such. So with that, uh, we confirmed uh, um, our fundamental, um, you know, the methodology is working. Okay. With uh, this uh, um, validation, we started, uh, um, you know, expand and generalizing the method. And uh, um, currently, what the, we are in the process of, uh, um, you know, the, 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 um, making the material, customized material for a um, particular application. But the progress was a bit slow, especially um, because of that three-year um, loss from the <laughs> pandemic that slowed down um, quite a bit. But still, um, you know, we are progressing. And uh, um, you know, from the initial um, you know, the, 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 the method, we found a couple of uh, um, you know, technical issues and we tried to address. And I think we found a way um, to realize that. Uh, one is, uh, um, as you could, uh, uh, you, you saw before, so solid uh, um, large um, surface and electrostatically you bind it. So on one end of DNA has uh, positively charged group. We use amine group there. But uh, you cut and still positively charged, uh, you know, the, the group is there, right? So that, um, you know, try to interfere over assembly of, uh, um, you know, the structure there. So uh, we try to, um, you know, the, address that by removing that um, chemical group. And the other thing is what it is. This is what the hard, uh, um, you know, challenge to overcome. But as you can see here, um, you know, 1D and the 2D. So 1, 2, 3 number stands a different type of DNA. Okay? So 1D, 2D, you um, one by one attach, no problem. They are anisotropic, right? But what the problem starts from the 3D. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 2D, and the uh, you know, fifth one coming, it can bind the front or back, right? So they are different. So chiral different start to happen. So um, one way would be um, to find a way to separate this uh, to um, Kyler, you know, the, 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 um, the, the, the particle there, but it's uh, virtually impossible. Um, you know, I cannot say impossible, but it's really, really, really hard. So um, this is what the fundamental problem um, our initial method has. So how we can overcome those? So that's the one um, we try to, um, you know, we spend uh, almost uh, four to five years to, to find a way. First, the problem is they're kind of straightforward, right? So um, you know, as I mentioned there, here, um, at the end, it does have uh, um, you know, any group there, right? So that interfered. So the way we did was what the, the same process, but what the, the um, chemical group um, on one hand, two DNA. Between those, we put the photocleavage um, you know, part there. So after um, cutting, it shouldn't UV light, and we can cut those chemical group. So with that, we could uh, solve uh, um, the problem. And uh, anyway, this shows what the, the um, you know, photocleavage cutting that process working. Okay. But the second problem was what the, um, the one. We thought of, uh, um, you know, we could uh, separate those, but uh, the way we realize that it's really, really hard, right? So I started uh, um, you know, scratching my head, and then what, uh, um, 
started thinking. That time, DNA brickwork could start coming out too. But, uh, the, um, you know, as a matter of fact, DNA is uh, 3D model. Usually, we draw the DNA as 1D or what the helical, so maybe that's 2D one. But actually, DNA is a 3D. They make uh, um, helical tons, right? So um, around the 10, 11 days, they make uh, 360 tons, right? So um, depending upon the length of DNA, you could uh, make uh, um, you know, three-dimensional um, you know, changes. So based upon that, um, Basically, what uh, we borrowed the concept of DNA grid and how we can um, apply those to our method. So with that, we thought uh, we could just use 1D or 2D, um, you know, the, 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 the um, building block, and we could build the 3D structures, 1D to 3D, 3D or something. So that was uh, um, the approach we took. So, um, and this thematic, you know, shows uh, um, left-hand side is uh, um, original way. So that is 3D or control over the anisotropy of DNA. And then let them interact and the making a 1D, 2D, 3D structure building. That's the left-hand side. But uh, again, that chirality problem. So um, using 3D feature of DNA and the 1D or 2D um, building block, and we can make uh, 3D structures. That's the uh, new approach we started. So um, there are the many different things involved about too many chemistries. So um, basically what we did was uh, testing 1D and the 2D, um, you know, the building block. Which one works uh, better when we apply that um, DNA brick-based 3D feature of uh, um, you know, DNA to build uh, a 1D to 3D. So we found that uh, um, 1D works better. 1D, particularly what the, the uh, 1 DNA attached looks better. So with that, and then um, the one, the one key evidence whether our proposed method is working or not is what uh, using those uh, um, you know the, the, the DNA M block the, the starting material and with a particular number of DNA. DNA with a particular size, and uh, implementing that um, DNA ring method. If we have this uh, um, tetrahedron-like shape, then that validates um, the approach we took um, based upon DNA brick works. Okay, so that's what the, um, the one simulation tells, and also what the um, you know, DNA only DNA brick um, study tells. So we. Um, did the trial and errors, and also what a lot of uh, um, you know adjustment needs to be done. But a um, couple of years ago, and uh, um, finally we um, you know find com com confirmation the tetrahedron-like tetrahedron shape um, is truly formed. So for this, what we use is what the nanoparticle and then one DNA. So one DNA, um, you know, designed in such way so they make a particular ton. So um, they attach to next the particle, then they make a 90 degree angle ton. Okay, so with that, uh, we can make a three dimensional structure there. So um, you know, the we have evidence our uh, approach will work. Okay, but again, uh, because of last uh, um, you know three years. Uh, students uh, could not work and this and that, so slow, but what do we make progress, okay? And, uh, um, you know, currently, um, you know, we file the invention disclosure and this and that, so hopefully what we can um, discuss um, this more data um, in the future. Okay, so with that, um, if that's what the currently we try to do. So here the keyword is what the, um, this, right? Modular self assembly. Self assembly is what the, the way um, you know without your control you mix the stuff and what the assembly happened there. So um, what we really like to happen is for size, size, shape, and uh, composition control, we want to what the, um, you know the particular material we designed should not happen at the end, right? So that type of uh, um, material should be assembled. Um, 
at the end of self-assembly process. So we put the word modular there. Um, that's what the, the um, meaning of the word, okay? So again, we tried to um, you know, generalize and expand the method. And we already applied the DNA brick technology um, to overcome our baseline challenge. And also what we tried to use uh, um, you know, other um, DNA-based nanotechnology. DNA-based nanotechnology uh, advanced quite a bit. It started from, and, and, you know, DNA-based nanotechnology, that build started from DNA computing. The um, idea was using DNA, we had to do the, um, you know, replace the conventional computer. That's what the, the you know, start. But uh, it has a problem there. Not problem, challenge, big challenge there. So that's why many people in DNA computing move to the DNA-based nanotechnology. So using DNA and variety of different shape, size of materials and apply that to solve partly computational problem and also apply that for material science. So that's the one. But that's only DNA, right? So, um, you know, DNA does have a unique property there, but they cannot uh, um, cover all the functions and properties we need. As, as a material scientist or in the field of material science and engineering. So, um, you know, we borrow some of them and uh, combine those with, uh, um, you know, our method and the try to do better. And I bring this up again, right? So that's uh, the one. I always start, to, um, you know, remind me whenever I design and do the work, right? So then what, uh, not just the, the focus on the material itself and where I'm going to apply. We gotta uh, consider that at the design stage and development stage. So I say that there is a holistic approach, but what the uh, overall things, not only the material, but also what the their location of application, what would happen together, should be considered for um, you know, the, 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 the um, development of uh, um, materials. Okay. So with that. Um, I will just uh, skip through. That is what uh, another material, cellulose nano nanocrystals we are using and applying nano toolbox technology, how we can control their interface so that we can make uh, um, better control the over um, the size or what the, their um, interactions or their um, you know, the assembly patterns and all those. So uh, with that, um, yeah, that's the advantage of cellulose in nanomaterial. One of the things, as mechanical engineer would be interested is what the um, cellulose nanocrystal has a very unique um, mechanical property. Okay, so um, you guys may know carbon nanotube has a very strong, you know, the, the mechanical strength, there, right? So um, similarly, cellulose nanocrystal has what uh, strong mechanical property. But um, compared to the cell carbon nanotube, this is biological material, right? So biologically driven material. So biocompatibility um, you know, issue is not real big problem. Carbon nanotube, very good unique property and application, but what the biological application, always the, the um, you know, challenge is how I can convince people it is biocompatible, non-toxic. Right? So that's uh, um, true for graphene too. So um, that's why um, practical application of those two biomedical human related application is very, very limited. But this does have a potential um, to replace some of them. So anyway, so for that we do um, you know, the, 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 the composite materials for um, contrast agent and also at, uh, um, for tissue engineering, scaffold and as such. And uh, if those are what the, the type of things we do. And we try to also apply to the agriculture. Again, I'm in the field of uh, um, agriculture too. But anyway, so um, the other thing is, uh, um, you know, nowadays, um, frankly speaking, I'm more to food or, um, you know, more to food than um, food and nutritional application than biomedical. The only reason is biomedical is really hard to make it really happen in practice. Because of the, that you know, clinical trial, it takes a long time, right? So um, that fundamental method, there are what the people, um, Dr. Jarov continue doing it, but as uh, um, you know, engineer, we do that, material develop and uh, um, biomedical scientist or doctor, they do um, such clinical application there, but um, 
application in my part, I try to same concept method for food or nutrition. So there are what the, um, easier to commercialize um, you know, food related things. Okay, so that's uh, the one. If you interested in, then there are a couple of review articles and you could read that. Okay, with that, thank you very much. And hopefully I didn't bore you too much with the, too much biology and chemistry. Okay, thank you. So that is what the, the um, you know, I didn't go to, through detail. Based upon DNA case, DNA, DNA interaction, right? Right, right. So, right. right. DNA particular sequence, then DNA is what uh, um, unique, has advantage because of those molecular recognition property, ATGC, right? So making particular structure there, then one strand will only bind to their counterpart. That's the so that's uh, the way um, the, the uh, one by one attach that DNA to there. So that is, uh, yeah, so I should have. Uh, yeah, so basically here, right? So there curved the line, that's DNA. So um, there and the particle, the yellow one is gold, that could be magnetic particle or whichever, right? And then what, uh, attached to the DNA, the one end of DNA, uh, which already attached to a um, large surface. And then we cut the other end. So we have one DNA attached there, right? And to repeat that, we could attach two, three, four, five. But the, the, how does the DNA know which point of the nanoparticle to attach to? Which point? Yeah, the I think it's right. So that is a good question. That is what the, the one I don't know yet. Right. So there, um, you know, that's a spherical. See, wherever you bind, it should be same, right? But what the triangular shape, right? So we think what the, it will bind the, um, you know, the the, the, the edge of it, but um, that should be determined. So one way we can do it is what the um, you know particle there then. Particle, um, you know, surface. If we can control the tip and side, find a way to, um, you know, chemical groups different, charge different. If that's one way. But what, the, you know, that particular shape, particular triangles, that's how. But square, I mean, like cube, it's more or less similar to, um, the you know, the, the or the, in the middle of the. Using middle. In the middle. So more surface there. So similarly as uh, um, the, the, the spin. Right. Here, I also have the same question here. So in the step one, how could you limit the, um, you know, um, only one DNA strand bind to the one particle? So if you mix them particles and DNA in the one, uh, one batch, you know, maybe two or three DNAs can go to the single particle. So is there a kind of, do you control any kind of electrostatics on the particle or? Actually, no. So one, so the one you're talking about is what the something happened. We call it FERC in the solution there, right? So DNA in the solution with uh, that red uh, chemical group, right? Which will bind to the gold, right? You add the gold particle, then multiple of DNA will bind, right? So um, that's what the, the way happened. But what we have done is what we don't want that. So we want to control one by one. So we use, we call that as solid phase um, exchange reaction, ligand exchange reaction, which means the ligand, in this case, DNA on top there, DNA is on the uh, surface of uh, solid uh, um, you know, particle there, mm -hmm. right? So it's not going to you know, freely um, you know, the, the floating in the solution is on the surface. Also, oh, particles are fixed on the substrate. Right. Okay. So that particle is 
large. So it's about, uh, um, I think the size is uh, around 100 micron size. It's huge. So, and yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> not really scale. Okay. So that makes people confused. I understand that. But it's huge. And a lot of different particles, DNA attached there. So it's a possible still on the surface. Oh, so more than one can bind. If DNA, you know, close to each other, then particle go and the two can bind, right? So we can control the spacing of the DNA on solid surface with the, by controlling concentration and such, right? So we can only make uh, gold bind or particle bind to one oh. DNA. Okay. Oh, so here, here uh, the one at a time means, uh, you know, one, one DNA at a, at a time. Yeah. Okay, I thought this was one particle and one DNA. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so I, gotta, I should put that, you know. One DNA. Oh, one final question. Yeah, uh, uh, for the first part, when you were showing the uh, contrasting gene uh, method, in that, what is the reason of using tribal nanotubes in the period? Like, the, is this tribal nanotubes coated with gold? So, what is the purpose of, or the reason for using it? So, carbon nanotube, uh, a reason why, if I understand your question correctly, um, you know, initially we're interested in carbon nanotubes. The main reason why we interested was uh, carbon nanotube respond to near infrared light, so it does have a round shape, right? And also, what the test, those uh, um, surface chemistry make uh, nanotube respond to the near infrared light. Well, what I have interested in was find the counterstays and which can um, drive uh, non-invasive uh, therapeutics, right? So that's what the, the main goal there. So we try to find the uh, some particle particle system respond to the near infrared light. So, the main reason why we used the carbon nanotube was uh, um, you know, their responsiveness to near infrared light. But uh, um, we, um, you know, realize we better we gotta uh, have better thing. Carbon nanotube has uh, advantage, but again, toxicity related issue there, right? And also at the Individual carbon nanotube, they respond to near infrared, but responsiveness is not that high. So because of that, we need to boost up um, the responsiveness. So we um, decided to um, cover it with the gold. So that increased the responsiveness. Without uh, um, covering the, uh, the gold, why we have, we actually have the more responsiveness than um, similar size um, particles. Shaped size particle. That's similar one is nano rod, right? Nano rod is what the, the um, you know the material. Still, a lot of people using it um, for near infrared application. So um, we have uh, some stronger response there. So we wonder what would be the cause of it. So we thought uh, maybe you know carbon nanotube has a hollow core there, right? Coring that. So inside the core is hollow. So that would contribute. So we tried to really hard to find what the um, you know the the the, the um, result hollow core in there to get image what we get but you know anyway so that's uh, um, near infrared responsiveness was the main drive. To use thank you for the interest of time and as a thank professor. Thank you.
Thank you. We can we can move to my office. Uh, yep. And leave the backpack right. in my office. Sure. 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 This is good, right? I'll uh, capture record. Oh, well, one thing we need to confirm with you is that yeah, so okay. this 